What's up you guys, I'm back with another video. In today's video, we're going to talk about a career path of a machine learning engineer and we're gonna compare it to the career path of a software engineer and a data scientist. So it's gonna be an interesting one. And for this video, we have a special guest, my buddy Rajwardhan Oak, who is currently working as a machine learning engineer at Microsoft in Seattle. So very warm welcome to Raj. And Raj, why don't you introduce yourself for the viewers? Hey Abhishek, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Raj and I work with Microsoft as a machine learning engineer, as Abhishek already said. I graduated from UC Berkeley with my master's degree in information systems in May 2020. My research focus was data science and machine learning and in particular applications of machine learning to security critical stuff like malware analysis, network traffic analysis, uh, fake news detection. And, and so on. All right, so that gives us a lot of context about your master's, but I'd also like to know what was your bachelor's like? What did you study and how did that lead you into going for master's? I mean, why did you go for master's in the first place? Right, so my bachelor's was in computer science and that was a computer engineering degree that uh, most people do in India. It made my fundamentals strong. I had a strong command over most programming languages in my bachelor's, but I got introduced to a subject called data mining and business intelligence in my bachelor's. That really spurred my interest. I wanted to look more at that field. And at the same time, we were also studying digital forensics and cybercrime. So I sort of was interested in both and I was on the fence on, you know, what uh, do I want to make my career in? But then I thought that, you know, these two can be fused quite easily. Machine learning has to be applied somewhere and security is a critical and evolving field. So, you know, why not merge them two and apply machine learning to security? As far as uh, the question of why masters, the thing is there weren't a lot of opportunities back home, back in India at that time. Um, for such a niche course of study. So I wasn't able to find any professors, any researchers or any institutions which worked in this core field that is applying deep learning and machine learning to security issues. It was very difficult to find a core position back then. I thought that a master's degree from UC Berkeley would really help and it actually did. I was able to work with so many world-class professors and researchers who are working in exactly the same field and I do have a job in that field right now as well. So it worked out. That sounds really great to me. In fact, your bachelor's background is quite interesting. But the viewers want to know which IIT did you go to? I mean, a lot of people have the belief that you need to be from an IIT in order to succeed in this industry. So why don't you tell a little bit more about that? To begin with, you do not need to be from an IIT to uh, succeed in this field. I am not belittling or demeaning anyone from any IIT or BITS. I respect all of you guys. You've worked really hard to get there and you deserve all you're getting. Being in a college like an IIT does give you an edge because basically during those four years, you can pursue lots of things which other students in local universities cannot, like research internships, foreign internships, uh, long six month training programs and internships. Uh, for me, I was I studied in a local college called PICT in Pune, India. So it was affiliated to the University of Pune. That's where I did my bachelor's from. And of course, as I said, I do have the utmost respect for IITNs and people from BITS, uh, but I have seen people from other universities also greatly succeed in this field. So, you know, okay, fine, you did not get into an IIT, but work harder and sort of try to overcome it and improve yourself. Exactly. So that's what even I stress on most of my videos that, you know, if you're from IIT, good for you, right? It might open a lot of doors for you, but that doesn't mean that those doors are closed for you if you're not an IITian. Even if you're not from IIT, you might have to work a little bit harder and do things a little differently. But in the end, you can certainly succeed in this industry. All right, moving on. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about your job profile? I know you work as a machine learning engineer at Microsoft, but what exactly do you do over there? And how is it different from a software engineer or a data scientist? What a machine learning engineer does is a mixture between a data scientist and a software engineer. So I'll talk a little bit about what a data scientist does uh, and then I'll come to an, a machine learning engineer. So a data scientist is responsible for identifying various data sources, formulating business problems with them, scraping the data sources, standardizing them, cleaning them, doing some statistical modeling and experimenting with various models to see which one gives you the best performance. On the other hand, what a machine learning engineer does is to deal with production. So once a data scientist has validated a model and it has given uh, decent results, a machine learning engineer has to actually make sure that the model can run uh, in production and that the actual end clients can access it. 
So for example, I work in security and machine learning. Uh, one of our models has to do with a risk score for a user. Like what is the probability that the user can be compromised or what is the probability that an action is suspicious? So we have a huge team of data scientists who works who work with different models and different data sets to uh, come up with the best combination. What my job is to re-implement that model such that it is the most optimal and it can run in real time uh, without any scalability or performance issues or without any downtime. So the difference between a data scientist and a machine learning engineer is basically what you focus on. A data scientist focuses on accuracy, getting the correct data and finding the best model. But a machine learning engineer has to talk, think about optimizing your code, uh, making sure that it's available reliably and securely in production to our end customers. So that's what I do. I uh, We do uh, a little bit of experimentation and model validation, but for the most part, it is writing those models for production systems. Well, that's really helpful, Raj. I think that gives us a lot of context about the role of a machine learning engineer. But my next question would be, do you really think that machine learning engineer is sort of the ultimate blend of a software engineer and data scientist? And if yes, why? That's I'll say definitely it is the perfect combination of data science and software engineering. I'm a machine learning engineer and I do a lot of data analysis as well. I look at various log files, various events. Uh, try to model them, try to improve our models, try self-supervised learning, unsupervised learning, all of that stuff. But again, uh, my end goal is to make sure that it works for our customers. So when our model is ready, I need to write uh, ETL pipelines, uh, some sort of microservices, leverage cloud computing infrastructures of the uh, Azure infrastructure and make sure that it runs in production. So I do have to write a lot of code, uh, which is not like just analysis, it's just pure software engineering, pure coding, but a lot of it is data analysis as well because uh, I'm answerable to the customer. So for a particular model, if uh, the model says something, I'm answerable to them because I own that service. So I'm answerable to them in explaining why this model is doing what it is. So I think uh, if you like data science, but if you also like to write code, machine learning engineer is the perfect blend. Yeah, you're right. I think that makes a lot of sense to me as well. But the next follow-up question that I have is how much money does a machine learning engineer make? Because I know these are different fields in the tech industry, like machine learning engineer, software engineer, data scientist, and stuff like that. What kind of salary ranges can people expect by getting into these fields in the tech industry? Right. So, you know, a salary depends on a lot of things, not just the field. Uh, it mainly depends on location as well. If you are in one of the big companies and by them, I mean like Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, Apple, or similar. These are just like the few names at the top of my head. If you are in these companies uh, at their locations, like most of them are in either California, New York, or Seattle. So at their locations, you can easily make uh, more than $100,000 a year. Uh, that's just the base salary. It comes along with a generous package of stock bonuses, a sign-on bonus, which you get for the first time. And of course, the other, all of the other benefits like health insurance. So you can definitely make good money, I'll say. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought, right? Because I know that software engineers and machine learning engineers and data scientists, in the end, they're all contributing to the same tech industry. And I mean, it all comes down to what you really like, right? What you're passionate about. Some people might like web development, others might like mobile development or data science, whatever it is, right? If you really like what you do, then you become good at it. And if you're really good at it, you make plenty of money wherever you go, right? Because in the tech industry, ultimately, it all comes down to your skills and your knowledge that you have gained over the years. So moving on, let's talk a little bit about your master's experience and what kind of internship did you do? Where did you intern? I mean, did you actually intern as a machine learning engineer at Microsoft or what was it like? So my internship wasn't at Microsoft. Um, I was working with IBM in my uh, summer internship and I was a data science intern over there. My work there was uh, mainly natural language processing or NLP based. So we had to look at several articles and several analyst reports and identify sentiment and various kinds of scores, various kinds of metrics that we had to come up with. That was really interesting. That gave me a lot of data science and NLP practice and hands-on coding experience. But my field of interest was computer security, uh, machine learning and computer security. So I would have gladly taken a job as a data scientist if it had been in a security field, like, you know, phishing, spam, malware, network attacks, botnets, and so on. I was really strong in my machine learning fundamentals. I had worked with uh, Berkeley professors as a research assistant. So I was really, uh, I had a strong command over deep learning frameworks as well. 
and when this uh, Microsoft opportunity came along, I was really glad uh, I was able to crack it. So that's how I came. I landed up a machine learning engineer from a data scientist intern. All right. So you already worked as a data scientist and now you moved on to machine learning engineer. I think that's really helpful. So next natural question would be, how did your application process look like? How did you prepare for your interviews? You know, your resume, reaching out to the companies and stuff like that. So let's talk a little bit more about your job application process. Sure. So the first step is going to be getting a good resume. So I focused, I worked a lot on my resume. Uh, I used Latex to make my resume. I use an online free tool called overleave.com. It has tons of templates. It makes your resume look really professional. That's what I did. I had my resume reviewed multiple times from multiple people, from my career advisors at college uh, and some friends in the industry as well. I know that you have to have a good resume. But to have a good resume, you need to have good stuff. So all do, all through my masters, I focused on doing as many projects as I could. I absolutely overworked myself. Uh, I worked nights sometimes. I absolutely took on more than I should have, but it was worth it. Because I could, I had so many projects on hand, I could pick and choose and make sort of the best resume for every job application. Always customize your resume for every job application. Uh, don't send out a stock resume. So that's the first step, getting a good resume. And like the precursor to that is do lots of projects so that you can get a good resume. The second advice would be never stop applying. I never stopped applying. I was always applying like again and again, going to career fairs, going to networking events, reaching out people on LinkedIn and applying. It never stopped. And the third thing is, uh, which is another reason why you should do projects is uh, the story of how I got to this job of Microsoft is pretty interesting. I did not actually apply for this job because I didn't believe that I could get into such a niche field of ML and security as a fresher. I was working with a, a professor from my school on his research as uh, a GSR or like an RA. We call it a GSR in Berkeley. I was working as his research assistant and he happened to go to a conference where one of his friends from Microsoft Research uh, met him. And they got to talking about his work and the guy from MSR mentioned that he was looking for people to start the next year. And my professor, you know, immediately referred me because I was doing well in the project. I had been consistent. I was working with him for a year and we had good results. He, I had, I basically, you know, was in his good books. So he sort of informally referred me there. So unfortunately to work at MSR, you do need a PhD most of the times. And that's why his friend reached out to me and said, you know, MSR probably might not be a good fit because of uh, it's a research position, but I will forward your resume to some other hiring managers. And then he did forward my resume to my current manager who was really interested in my resume because like the, because as you know, like as I described my, the work was really relevant. So he did reach out to me and that's how we had the interviews. So another reason to do your projects is it might help you land a job like it did me. Yeah, as a matter of fact, even I stress on all my videos how important it is to build projects. So guys, this is your cue. You need to build great projects even if you want to get into data science. All right, Raj, I think that was really helpful and you answered pretty much all my questions, but we're also running out of time. So how about you quickly summarize and share your final words of advice for the viewers and all the students who are actually planning to get into this field? Right. So, you know, I just reiterate over what I said before to lots of projects that's helped me tremendously and I'm sure it will help you. It might not help you immediately. Uh, you might not get the dream job in your first go, but you're definitely learning a lot and it all amounts to uh, adding to your resume somewhere and you will definitely make it if you, if you work hard enough and uh, play your cards wisely, choose good professors, choose good courses, uh, do lots of projects, overwork yourself absolutely during your masters and I'm sure you'll get there. Um, if you have any questions or you need my help with anything, please feel free to reach out to me. My replies are pretty sporadic, but I do try to reply to everyone who has uh, reached out to me. So please feel free to uh, reach out to me and I'll try to answer any questions that uh, you guys have. And of course, uh, thanks Abhi for uh, having me today. No problem. Thank you for your time Raj. 
Well, that's it for this video. I hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that like button. And if you have any more questions for me or for Raj, you can leave them in the comments down below. I will also put all of Raj's links in the description so that you can connect with him directly on LinkedIn or Instagram. He's a very helpful person. So definitely shoot your questions at him and I'm sure he'll help you out. And if you want to connect with me on Instagram, you can find my Instagram ID somewhere on the screen and I'm happy to help you out as well. And that's it. Thanks for watching.